uh, if you remember, we just finished the moments of area, the second moments of area, or the moment of inertia. Uh, we endeavored to find the centroid of different shapes and solids. Uh, the purpose of that, though, if you remember, was to handle distributed loads. So we're going to come back now to, to that. We had to take a little bit of the side trip to, uh, to the, well, we needed, we needed to find the centroids of those areas of the distributed loads anyway, but then we took a little bit of a side trip to do the moment of inertia and uh, some other little things in there while we were going. So now we can get back to the distributed loads and actually solve some problems. So imagine, we'll start with a, a fairly straightforward one. A distributed load that, that uh, we can model with a straight line of some kind. And we'll, uh, we'll put that at halfway. So we'll just call that three meters. And it goes to a maximum of four kilonewtons per meter. Remember, that's the, that's the uh, amount of load per meter of beam. It starts with no load, and by the time it gets up to the middle, it's equivalent at that point to four kilonewtons per meter. Now there's not a whole meter there, it's just where the function ended. And we want to find the reactions then. Okay, so that, that kind of thing then, uh, then we can do. Back to uh, uh, our usual things. Remember, the reason we wanted to find this, uh, deal with this distributed load, was so that we could we could then replace that distribution with a single force that was the same size and at the right place so that we get the same reactions that we would have gotten anyway if we'd really had the distributed load and really could have done it. Trouble was, uh, well, we, we could have. Uh, we could have just integrated to get where the the moment was every single time we come up with one of these things, but we found out it was a lot easier because we know that that equivalent force goes right through the centroid of the area of that distributed load. And so if we have nice regular shapes for the distributed loads, all of those are already in a table and we can just figure out right what they are. So we'll put our equivalent force there at an appropriate spot, and we know then that those the the equivalent force is well, of course, equivalent to the distributed load in uh, the reactions it causes. So the last bit we need to do is find out how big that equivalent load is and just where it goes. And then we can do the rest of the problem, which is find the reactions. So how big is that equivalent load? Remember how to find it? Oh, it shouldn't be anything you need to look up. This is, you learned this in third grade. 
Well, I don't think he did distributed loads in third grade. <laughs> but the, the mathematics you need to find how much that's equal to you did in third grade. In general, it's equal to the area under the load curve itself. But this load curve conveniently happens to be a triangle, so it's the area under that triangle. We need to find that area. So who is willing to venture how to find the area of a triangle? Wrong. I didn't pay attention in third grade, and I'm not going to pay attention now. Remember the area of a triangle? My, my third grade was a lot longer ago than yours, so I remember. That's Ms. Maines. I remember. I remember passing out the lunch tickets, and I wrapped a ring in. Mary Lawrence and I handed it to her. That was my first girlfriend. Let's see, the base is three meters and the height is that four kilonewtons per meter. So, oh by golly, notice that of course the units work out as they always do. So, what's that? 12 kilonewtons, or 6 kilonewtons, I mean. Is that right? And where do we place it? Do you remember where it was, where the centroid is for triangles? This was probably fourth grade you learned the centroid of triangles. Yeah, one, one third from the fat end, and since that was three meters, then x bar is two meters. And you can finish the problem. Do we, do we, should we do that or do some more distributed loads? Well, you can almost do that one in your head, right? We know that the two forces got to equal the total load and then we know the moments must be equivalent so maybe if we sum the moments about A we get 6 kilonewtons at 2 meters that's why we needed to place that load because of the moment it causes and that must be balanced by B itself at 6 meters. And so it should be all done. Do that in your head. Or your calculator if you need help dividing 12 by 2. I just, oh, it's heaven. <laughs> just, I'm keeping track of what I'm doing. <laughs> Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> yep, tape was running. <laughs> so B is two kilonewtons and A is four. As as A you'd expect A to be more since the weight's more towards that direction. Notice that we we could not have simulated this with uh, an equivalent load that's evenly distributed because the force is acting at a different point with that one. We need to have that distribution replaced with its equivalent, which is both magnitude and position uh, dependent. Okay. Well, we'll just do some more. Because you're feeling pretty good about this, I guess. So we have to make it harder. Um, 
This one in 1967, Time Magazine said was the hardest statics problem ever. And so uh, I went and looked and it was unsolvable in 67. Let's see if you guys can do it. Support system there. Just to screw you up. All right, midway. We have a lower distribution like that. All right, now here's, here's the problem. The problem's not done yet. Here's the problem. As set up like it is, the support over here uh, on the right end will be such that the beam is resting on the lower roller. How big must the moment be that causes the load to shift from the lower roller to the upper roller. If that moment is zero, then it's as if it doesn't exist and it's just resting on the lower roller. Slowly turn up that moment, slowly twist the beam until the load shifts from the lower roller to the upper roller. Hardest statics problem in 1967. Given to 2,500 PhD candidates in mechanical engineering. Not one of them could solve it. I remember seeing that, uh, that TV show, Pat Boone was the host. Hardest statics question ever. Great show, ran every year. Then Dick Clark came out with his own show, the, uh, the, the uh, uh, Statics Hit Parade, tried to steal. I don't think anybody's even listening anymore. Well, I'll talk to the tape. Oh, you're listening. All right, so you're gonna need uh, a good free body diagram by good, I mean it's got to have all the pieces in it that you need to handle this load that's the moment load that's increasing to change the load at the right end where the rollers are. Plus, you have the distributed load you have to replace as well. So we've got all this terribleness going on. So we've got that distributed load. We want to replace that with an equivalent force at the right location. We also want to get the, the right idea about the reaction. so that we can then find out how big the moment should be. So 
let's work on the distributed load first. Remember, you need the right magnitude, but you also need it in the right place. So let's see what you're doing with it. Some people have the, the right idea with it. First thing you do is check in the book and see if that shape is in there so you know where the centroid is. We know how high it is. We know how wide it is because it's the three feet on each of those sections. Do we have that shape, that trapezoidal shape in the, uh, in the table in the book? I don't believe so. So what do you do? Yeah. The easiest thing to do is to break this distributed load into two sections and just put the two forces in, not do it as a single force. So we need an equivalent force for that part and an equivalent force for that part and they each need to be at the right place. But since they're nice regular solids, it's pretty easy to figure out how big they are and it's pretty easy to figure out where they belong. and we're trying to find that moment. So what's the reaction at the very right end? Remember, we're looking for how big the moment must be to shift the load from the lower roller to the upper roller. So what do we put for the reaction at Zero. For the reaction in B, what do we put here? Mr. Mr. Raptor said zero. Is that right? zero load over there. All right, so given, given that problem then, we can find out what the reaction of A would be needed. Notice that as that moment increases, the reaction at A is going to increase. And we can find out what the moment is now for the uh, for the load at the right end to be zero. Okay, again, the equivalent loads are just the areas under those. So, let's see, the square is what, 1,200 pounds? And the triangle is then half that. and you need both of those plates. But again, the triangle is two-thirds of the way across. So x bar one equals two feet. 
Remember, in equations, don't use those little tick marks for feet because then they look like power uh, exponents. And x bar 2 is three feet to where the square part stop, starts and then half of that again. So that's uh, four and a half. Four and a half feet. And now you have enough to figure out the reaction at A and the, uh, the moment. is the reaction at A. Anybody have that yet? Three hundred and thirty three pounds. I don't
1,800 pounds because the units don't even work. You know what the units are for a moment? Yeah. Uh, not, well, no, you don't, but now you remember it has units. That's closer. So, what are we doing? I was doing it in my head, so maybe I was wrong. 
Some, sometimes the buttons on the calculator in my head are kind of fuzzy and they move around a lot. 6,600 pounds, foot pounds, is that it? Dana, is, is that what you got on your try or? You were getting close, good. Good job. 6,600 foot pounds or pound foots. Make sense? Good job, Dana. Make sense? Now that you erase everything that makes sense. Look good, Mr. Raptor. Okay. Here, let's let's be kind. Let's do one of the homework ones, and then you don't have to do it. Let's let's try 105. <gasps>
hip is kip feet, kittle pound. Twelve kips here. And then from two to five kips per foot. Distributed load. Uh, directed up. So, now what? Remember, you're looking for the equivalent, or you're looking for the right free body diagram with the distributed load replaced with an equivalent. What are you doing? Checking the book, see if that load's in there? Sure would be convenient. Trapezoidal uh, load sheet. So, that load shape is not in there. What are you going to do? Do what? You can do anything you want as long as you know where the centroids are and can find out the area. Probably the easiest thing to do is to break it into those two shapes because we can certainly do a rectangle and we can certainly do a triangle. So, for uh, for load one, we know it's a rectangle, so that's going to be right in the middle. Load two is a triangle, but we've done those before. We know that the load's going to be one third the way over. So that would be maybe about there. Through the centroids. the uh, support reactions. We don't have those in there yet. What do those look like? What do the support reactions look like? I don't see any of them growing in there. You can't ignore them. diagram we replace the wall there at A with its reaction. A couple people are closer. I don't see anybody who's put the right reaction at the wall at A. So don't go any farther until you got it. Exactly what we had on this problem. 
and there's the reactions it supplies. A vertical and a horizontal, and moment. The, the embedding it in the wall keeps that beam from twisting at that point. So we need both, uh, both forces, AY, AX, and we need moment. Um, hard to tell what direction it's going to be, so just draw it in and see if we get a minus or not. That's the moment at A caused by the support wall. So I'll do AX for you. I'm a nice guy. The hard one. See, I jump in there and get the hard one first. I would click AX is zero. Up. So 
12 down plus A is up plus 10 is up plus 7 and a half is up. I think that's right. So AY is, is actually down, not up, because of the upward load uh, from below. It's actually pushing up on, uh, on that. So you can leave it like it is. Put in a negative, or you can swap it around and take out the negative when you do the. Well, actually, if we're doing the moment about that end, it won't even come into play, so we don't need to worry about it. Here we should make the. Well, I can't make it and get out of class question because I don't know the answer. Oh, wait, I do know the answer. It's right there. Guess I'd be dumb for a get out of class question. The answer right there. Let's put a bunch of stuff on your paper and then put 71.5. I'm not going to fall for that. <coughs> now, sum the moments about A. All the clockwise moments got to equal all the counterclockwise moments or they won't balance. And if you didn't get 71.5 don't come from it. Some of the moments about A. Just because that's where we measured X from and because it takes A out of the equation just makes things a little bit simpler. Especially since we got it upside down anyway. Is it working anybody yet? Let's see. So we've got the moment at the first point, which is counterclockwise. So we'll do those moments first. <laughs> Any other counterclockwise moments? Oh yeah, the, the two lower forces would tend to do that, so they'd go there too. Plus ten kips at seven and a half feet. Right, that's the moment due to what I called F1. plus the moment due to F2 at eight and a third feet. That's the moment due to force two, is that right? Seven and a half feet at eight and three, or seven and a half kips at 8.33 feet. And that's got to equal the counterclockwise. Well, I happen to draw it the wrong way, so we already know that's not going to work, so we can go ahead and fix it now. Because we don't have any other. Oh, wait, we got the 12. So maybe it was okay the way it was. Doesn't matter. We pick it one way and we'll draw 8 feet. And we'll leave it as clockwise since I just drew it that way. Does that look right? The first applied moment, remember its location does not matter. Moment is a free vector. F1 at its distance, F2 at its distance. 
Those are all counterclockwise moments, must equal the clockwise moments. And what's uh, MA come out to be? Does that work? Did we get 71 and a half? Woohoo! Once again, on tape, come out to be a genius. <laughs>